Hey everyone, it has been a long day of work today, but a lot has been accomplished, which I will show y'all in a minute. Oh my goodness, the wind has come. So we stopped working because the wind is insane. 25 to 35 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts up to 50 is expected tonight. And I'm in a tent. So um, it was suggested to me that I might want to uh, sleep in Phoenix tonight, just move my bed in here. So don't know if that's going to happen or not. I don't know if I feel up to it. You know, I don't know if I'm <sighs> have enough energy left in me to move the bed. I've slept in winds like that before in a tent. Uh, <laughs> back when I was with Rico, we've spent a lot of nights like that in a tent. So it doesn't scare me. Not too much, at least. All right. So let me show you what we did today. Um, but before I do, let me tell you who showed up. Tim and Susan, of course, and Maggie, who is camped with me. I'm so glad and grateful for her company. And then also a guy named, oh, I'm terrible with names, Cliff. And he brought his friend Jamie, who is just a two-day-old baby in the Nomad community. And I got to talk to him for quite a while. It was quite interesting to hear his story. Great guy. And uh, Cliff and he, then Matt. And Susan and Tim worked to take the seats out. You're going to be surprised when I show you. And then there's an issue with the door um, as far as security goes. And I think Matt and Cliff, is it Cliff or Clint? I am so bad with names. He's a great guy. They worked out a solution and they haven't done it yet because we need to get some supplies for that. So um, that'll get done eventually. And also the back door um, has a security issue with the handle and whatnot. So they're going to work on that too. <clears throat> They also figured out what the problem was with my side doors on the outside, the storage um, on the passenger side. We got that fixed and worked out. And then uh, Matt, amazing guy. You'll love this guy if you ever get to meet him. Anyway, he um, took the seats out of the back, the three that were out of the back. And that is what I am now sitting on. And it's right here in the front by the driver's seat behind it. So, um... And then we left one set of seats in to be the seats for my table. And we flipped another set of seats around and Matt and Tim and Susan all worked on putting these three seats here and then these two that are right over here. So I'll show those to you now. I hope you like it and are as excited about it as I am because it's amazing. See you in a sec. Do y'all remember what Phoenix looked like before today? Look at her now, guys. So we, not we, because I didn't do anything. <laughs> the wonderful, awesome people that came to volunteer today did all of this. They removed all of the seats except for this one. And then Matt, Susan, and uh, Tim turned this one around and installed it. So in between is going to be my table. And then Matt, Susan, and Tim moved the three that were back there against that wall up here. And that is my couch right as you come in the door. That's my couch. Isn't that awesome? And back here, underneath where the three chairs were before, we discovered a little tiny water tank. So we will either keep that and add to it or just get a bigger one. Not sure. Um, a lot of things are up in the air. <laughs> I want to move, remove this door and the, this wall here and this wall here. There's no reason for it. I'd like to remove this wall and bring the bathroom all the way out to here. So even with this wall right here, that way I can have a bigger bathroom because that would mean... Let me show you. I mean, this is a pretty big bathroom for an RV, right? It's about three feet, maybe three and a half feet deep. And it's a pretty big bathroom, right? But if I add this extra two feet, uh, God, I'm not doing a very good job filming. 
if I add this extra, I don't know, foot and a half, two feet, I can have a bathtub. <laughs> yes, I would love a bathtub. But of course, if I have a bathtub, I'm going to definitely have to have a bigger water tank, uh, maybe a hundred gallons, right? Um, and then this area right here, this area right here will be the bedroom up to about right there where the chairs are still sitting. Just didn't have anyone to help us get them out because a bunch of people had to leave. The wind is really bad. So that's why people left. Um, so the bedroom will go to about there. And then, of course, the kitchen counters, I'm trying to show you, will be all along this wall here. And I wanted to take it out to this track right here that's already in place so we could cover up that. But after measuring it, Matt, who is amazing, he said that that's not a normal width for cabinetry and it would cost me a lot more money to custom build. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around so I can talk to y'all. Okay, man, I'm sweaty. Um, so we would put in regular size counters in that space so that I wouldn't have to spend extra money on custom counters. Plus, there's another reason I'll tell you about in a minute. Also, you see these things up here? Everybody's been trying to convince me to keep them, but I don't want to keep them because I don't want any ca um, cabinetry above me. And, you know, sure, it's nice to have that much storage, but the sad reality is when you have multiple sclerosis, you have to understand that eventually you're probably going to end up in a wheelchair. So if I build out the bus now, to accommodate me for that future possibility, then I don't have to spend money building it out later. And I said this to Matt earlier. I didn't say it to anybody else. Matt was the last one here. Um, and he said, you know, well, then we definitely don't want your counters to come all the way out because that wouldn't give you enough, you know, space to move in a wheelchair. And he said, I can see why you don't want those things up there because they would be useless to you if you go in a wheelchair. <sighs> yeah, sad reality. But everything else, you know, that I've, I've wanted to do, um, that the ideas that I had, uh, I think were well received. Um, Matt pointed out to me that I don't need a pocket door since it's just going to be me living here. And he said pocket doors have a tendency to swell if you're in humid weather and stuff like that, like up in the Pacific Northwest or whatever. They tend to swell and could give you some problems. So I agreed with him and he said, why not just hang, you know, hippie beads in the doorway? And I went, ah, oh, you know, I'm a hippie. That might work. <laughs> and I also wanted a house, you know, door built. I'll show you where. Right here. So you come in the door up the stairs. I wanted it to come to an actual door right here where I could open it up and I could deadbolt lock it. That would mean building a wall right here behind me and another wall right here behind me and then a door frame right here and then putting in a door. And the reason I wanted that is because the actual bus door show you if I can do it. Don't know if I can. It's not secure at all. Ooh, it's windy out here. Look, I can just move this door. Anybody who wanted to get in my bus can get in my bus. It doesn't matter how much locks I have on it, right? But I don't want to give them easy entrance into my bus. So I was talking to the fellows about it and they came up with a solution where I don't have to build that. So that's awesome. <sighs> but I'm exhausted. So I'm going to take a break, sit down, chill out, maybe have a sandwich. <sighs> it's almost five o'clock. It's been a long day, but it's been a great day. And Phoenix, just look at her. Would you look at that? Just look at it. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I'll talk to you on the next video.